Hello mathematicians, today's video is on objective 109 which is prime and composite numbers. So our objective for today is students will be able to determine prime versus composite and prime factorized numbers. Let's actually add the word numbers at the end. So if you need to go ahead and pause the video so you can copy down our objective for today. Okay, before we start to talk about some of um, talk about prime and composite numbers, let's just define what they are. Um, so a prime number, and, and a lot of you might have heard this term before, but a prime number, so we have a formal definition, is a number, and remember I'm using the, symbol, the number symbol to simplify the word number, a number whose only factor whose only factor is 1 and itself. Okay, a prime is a number whose only factor is 1 and itself. So, a really quick, easy way that we can remember this is if we spell out the word prime, instead of writing an I, I'm going to put a 1, okay? So you can remember prime, if you want to, we can think of prime as 1 and me, okay? So when you write out the word prime, replace the I with the 1, we're going to say prime is 1 and me, okay? Prime numbers, their only factors are 1 and itself. A composite number, composite number is a number with factors other than one and itself, okay? So I just want to give you a, a quick, quick example of what that might look like, okay? So let's say we take the number Uh, three. Okay? Think of what times what gives you three. The only factors I can think that give me three are one times three. That makes three a prime number. Its only factors are one and me, one in itself. Let's take another example. Let's take six. All right, well, to get six, I could do one times six. I can do two times three. Now, six has more factors than just one in itself or one in me. It also has the factors 2 times 3. So that means 6 is a composite number. Okay? Now, a quick key point, a quick key point I want to write. The numbers 0 and 1 are neither prime nor composite. And I'm going to use P and C because we're running out of room a little bit. 0 and 1 are neither prime nor composite. The reason that 0 is neither is that its only factor is 0. The reason 1 is that its only factor is 1. Okay? In order for it to be prime, it needs to have both 1 and itself. And since it has the number, it just has one factor, it's not, e it's not either. It's neither prime nor composite. So, what I want you guys to do right now is I want you to try and identify some prime versus composite numbers. So we're going to scroll down a little bit. And let's do one or two quick examples together before I sit you loose to try this on your own. So, um, let's say that I want to know if 2 is prime or composite. I'm going to look at the number 2. If I'm not sure, I can make a factor cow. But I'm just going to kind of brainstorm right now. 2, I know 2 has a factor of 2 times 1. I can't think of any other factors for 2, so that must mean it's prime. Its only factors are 1 in me or 1 in itself. Okay, let's take something like 12. Again, if I need to, I can make a factor cow if I'm not sure, but I'm thinking, okay, I know 1 times 12, that's a factor. I know 3 times 4, that's a factor. I know 2 times 6, that's a factor. Okay, all these different factors I'm seeing, I'm saying, okay, this must be composite. 12 must be 
composite because it has more factors than one in itself. What I want you guys to do right now is go ahead and try and identify these numbers as prime or composite. So I want you to go ahead and complete A through L, this highlighted blue section. Quick um, key things you can look for to kind of help you. If it's an even number, okay, so numbers that end in 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0, if it's an even number, I want you to check. Can you divide by 2? If you can, then it's composite, right? And that makes sense because if 2 is a factor, then it has to have more factors than 1 in itself. Obviously, 2 is our first prime number, so 2 doesn't count, but any number after 2 will count. If it's odd, in general, odd numbers are pretty tricky, so I would just go ahead and make a factor cow if you aren't sure. And remember, once you've made a couple, a few of, found a few factors in your factor cow, you know whether or not it's prime or composite, because as long as you have more factors than one or itself, it's going to be composite. So go ahead and pause the video, and press play when you're ready to see the answers. Here are your answers. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Go ahead and double check all the different answers. Notice that zero and one were both neither. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is prime factorization. So before we go into what that looks like mathematically, let's go ahead and just define what prime factorization is. So prime factorization is a number broken down, a number broken down into only its prime factors. A number broken down into only its prime factors. If we're taking a test, we might see something like prime factorize the following. Okay, that's telling us we want to prime factorize something. Prime factorize the following. Now, when we prime factorize something, there's two general rules I want you to follow. The first is, if it's prime, circle it. Something happened with my pen today. If it's prime, circle it. If it's not, break it down. And I'll explain what this means in a second. If it's not, break it down. All right, we're going to go ahead and go on to some examples. So I want you to go ahead. Um, some of you have these examples at the bottom of your notes for 109, right down here. Um, there's not a lot of space here, so I want you to flip to the next page where there's much more space and just copy the examples down again so you have a little bit more space. All right, so we're going to go through two examples. Now, first thing we want to do is let's just read the question. It says prime factorize 12. So I know, okay, I'm going to break down the number 12. I want you to see that it doesn't matter how you break it down. No matter what factors we use, we're going to get 12. So we're going to prime factorize 12 a couple of different ways. So the first thing we need to think of is, okay, what times what gives me 12? We don't want to use 1 times 12. We want to think of factors besides 1 in itself. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, I'm going to use 2 and 6. Now, I'm going to look at these numbers and I'm going to say, okay, are either of these prime? I know 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. Okay, I know 6 is not prime, so I'm going to break that down. So 6, let's try 6. What times what gives me 6? I can do 3 times 2. I'm going to look at these numbers and say, okay, are either of these prime? Well, 3 is prime. I'm going to circle it. And 2 is prime. I'm going to circle it. All right? Now, I want to show you that it doesn't matter what factors you start out with. We still should get the same circled prime numbers in the end. Let's do it 12 again. Um, let's think of two different factors we could start with. I could do 2 times 6 to get 12. I could also do 3 times 4. So let's pretend like we started with those factors. I'm going to say, okay, 3 or 4, either of those prime. I know that 3 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. 
4 is not, so I'm going to break that down. And 2 times 2 gives me 4. I know 2 is prime, 2 is prime. Now, I just broke these trees down two different ways. You know that your tree is finished because you'll have circles at the ends of all of your different branches. And when I look at all these branches, there's circles at the end of all of them. I also know that it doesn't matter what way I break it down, we get the same prime factors. If you notice in this first tree right here, we have two twos and one three. If you notice in this second tree right here, we have two twos and one three. It didn't matter what factors we started out with, we still got the same prime factors at the end. Once your branch has circles at the end, all your factors, um, you've, you've prime factorized it out. The only numbers you have circled are prime numbers. Then it's time to write out your answer. And I want to write a quick key point um, on how we're going to write our answer. So I'm going to write that over here. Quick key point. You write your answer least to greatest least to greatest with exponents. Write your answer least to greatest with exponents. So let's look at, we're just going to use this first tree, okay? The trees are the same, it doesn't matter which one we're using, I'm just going to use this first tree. And I'm going to rewrite out the numbers I had. I had 2 times 2, remember I'm going least to greatest, so the 2's are going to come first, 2 times 2, and then times 3. Now, how could we rewrite 2 times 2? Well, instead of writing 2 times 2, I could write 2 squared, because that's 2 times itself, tw uh, 2 times, times 3. And this is our answer. Okay. Now, a couple things we can do to, to check that our answer is correct. If on our calculator we do 2 squared times 3, so if we do this in our calculator, 2 squared times 3, we should get 12 back up here. Okay, go ahead and check that. You should have seen that we, gotten, we got 12, okay? That's one way you can check. Now, you also have to check and see are the only numbers you have in your answer prime. Well, 2 is prime, 3 is prime. Okay, that works. The last way you should check is to double check you've included all of your 2's so I, and all of your different factors. So I see a 2 squared. So I'm going to come back up to my tree and say, okay, I had 1, 2 2's, and 1 3. That's a really good, smart, cut way of making sure that you included all your factors, especially as our factors start to get really big. All right, let's try uh, one more example, and then I'll have you try a couple on your own. Let's try and find factorize 56. Okay, so 56 is a hard one. So if you can't think of some factors right now, I want you to start thinking uh, about making a factor count. Something um, that I learned when I was little that helped me with 56 is I was taught 5, 6 equals 7 times 8. Okay? And I always think of it as counting 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, it's a quick trick of helping you, if that helps you remember. So I know that two factors of 56 are 7 times 8. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at these factors and I'm going to say, okay, are either of those prime? Well, I know 7 is prime. I'm going to circle it. And then I'm going to go to 8 and say, okay, is 8 prime? Uh, no, 8 is not prime. I need to think about what could I multiply together to get 8. I could do 2 times 4. Now I'm looking at 2 times 4. Is 2 or 4 prime? Well, 2 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. Is 4 prime? Nope, I need to break that down. So 2 times 2. And then I'm looking at 2 times 2. We have 2 is prime, 2 is prime. Now notice the ends of my branches, all of my branches have circles at the end. That's how I know that all my branches are done. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write these out, least to greatest. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 7. Now my answer needs to be written with exponents. So how could I rewrite 2 times 2 times 2? I could rewrite that as 2 to the 3rd times 7. Let's do a quick uh, double check. 
The only numbers I have in my answer are prime. Yes, 2 is prime, 7 is prime. Let's double check that 2 to the third times 7 gives me 56. So double check that. Yes, it gives me 56. And then let's double check that we included all of our numbers. So I had three two, so one, two, three. And I had one seven. I'm going to go ahead and cross that out. All right, let's go ahead and do some practice. I want you to go ahead and practice, uh, practice one, two, three, and four. So you're going to do practice one, two, three, and four. When you're ready, go ahead and pause the video now, and then when you're ready, press play, and you can see the answer. Make sure you're writing your answer out with exponents. All right, here are your answers. Right, let's go over a couple of quick things. On practice one and practice two, it, you'll start to see that our trees are starting to get a little bit big, and so this is when it's really important that you use that cross-out method. Right? So for example, on practice two, we have four twos. We should make sure we get all those. One, two, three, four, and one, seven. Use that cross-out cross -out method, because as you start to get bigger and bigger, um, prime factorizations, it's easy to miss one of the numbers. Practice 3 is a little difficult because you get to a, a really big number like 388. If your number is even, remember, you can always try dividing by 2 and starting there, right? So if we divide it by 2 in this instance, we got 194, and then we could break 194 down to 2 and 97. Now, if you got stuck at 97, that's an instance where you should just make a factor cow and double check does it have any factors to see whether or not it's prime or composite. And once you do, you can go ahead and you can see, oh, these are all of my prime numbers. All right, that's the end of our video for today. So go ahead and write down any questions that you have and be sure to come to class ready to practice.